I don't think I've ever watched a video like this where somebody brings this up. Most Christians ask me, Faith, how do I know to hear God's voice and get God's direction in my life? In fact, I've gotten that question a lot in my DMs lately. Honestly, I kind of think God's doing something. In Christians today, and even in this year, he's at work in your life, and that's why you clicked on this video in the first place. The more I've been studying some certain calls and demands in the Old Testament, the more I've seen this universal call that God's given all people. And it comes back down to the Hebrew, but applies to all of us, no matter what language we speak. Let's begin. Hi friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Faith. I am a pastor's wife, seminary grad, mom to two boys, and I do Bible studies and try and fight biblical literacy here on the internet. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions in my DMs about how to hear God's voice, knowing your spiritual giftings, and even just like knowing God's direction in your life. Should you send your kids to private school or public school? Should you go to this college or that college? Should you take this job or buy that house or whatever it may be? And I get it. It's a big thing and it's really emotional. I just went through this big asking God a big question in my own personal life and I shared the whole process on my Patreon. So if you wanna see it lived out in my own life, you can watch that there on my Patreon. I'll have that link down below. But if I've learned anything through the many seasons of my life where I've asked God to answer big questions I had, like what house to buy or where to go to school or if I should marry my husband, one common thread that is undisputable is God's faithfulness in my questions. I know it sounds trite to say, but God is in the moments when you're so sure and God's in the moments when you're doubting. God is in the moment when you're like, I really don't know what you're doing and I'm so lost and I think this is the end of the world and I'm not sure what you're doing, God. He is in that moment just as much as he's in that moment when you're like, wow, I see what you were doing all along, God. It's totally clear why I didn't see it sooner. Thank you, God, for delivering me and showing me the way or whatever it is. So just have that comfort. He's just as close and just as near today as he will be in the future, as he is ever. He's literally broken down every barrier to live inside of you with the Holy Spirit. He's at work, but I gotta tell you just honestly, I'm not a big fan of this stereotype in Christian circles or Christian culture where it's like, God parted the clouds and just spoke to me and said, go move across the country and sell everything and I don't know, do this wild thing because often that's not always how God works. So first be in the word of God it is alive and active and is sharper than a double-edged sword, but it's also profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So it is going to do stuff in your life, even when you don't feel or see it. So when you are reading, okay, what did I randomly, I flipped open randomly to Jeremiah 18. Okay. When you're reading Jeremiah 18 and you're so lost in the history and you're just trying to figure out what's going on in Jeremiah's life and what exactly he's saying to Israel and you know, random history facts about the exile. When you're in the midst, of that, that's all you see God doing in your life, right? But in the midst of it, he's softening your heart towards your own disobedience to God. He's softening your heart for those who are refugees, just like Israel was in exile. He's softening your heart, even just for worship and true and pure worship to God. God is working even when you don't feel him working in his word. So trust and pee in the word of God. That's the most important thing you can do when you're living life and breathing, but also when you're trying to discern God's leadership and direction in your life. But then two, also hold yourself accountable to other believers. And this is the not fun part. This is where you talk to your pastor. This is where you talk to the fellowship of believers and you're like, hey, pray for me because I'm trying to discern X, Y, and Z. We live in a generation in a day and age where everything is like, what do you think you want? And what is your dream? And what are your giftings? And I'm just gonna be honest with you. If I asked people my giftings 10 years ago, that would have solved a lot of problems for me today. <laughs> so ask believers around you, what are my giftings? What do you, what kind of callings do you see over my life? Do you see this, whether it's college, house, husband, whatever, do you see this being a good fit? Or what are some weaknesses or things that I I'm looking past and give yourself that opportunity to be corrected, opportunity for your idea, your idols to be rebuked. And that takes a level of humility that I think oftentimes we fail to acknowledge as a big part of following God's plan for our life. And then third, I am a big, big, big proponent of raw and real prayers with the Lord. I'm talking like more raw and real with the Lord than you are with anybody else, even with yourself. Even the stuff that you don't have the boldness to say to yourself out loud you talk to the Lord about it. Even the stuff you don't even have the boldness or the confidence to say to your spouse or your best friend or the person who knows you the bestest, you talk to the Lord better, deeper, richer, more intimately. Raw and real and honest does so much 
for one, your closeness to God, like your, your sense of his realness and closeness and his working. But then also a lot of times what comes out of my mouth or what comes out of those really intimate, deep prayers is very revealing about my idols, about my fears, even about past things that have shaped me and are shaping the way I deal with whatever problems or question I have. What comes out of those really deep, really intimate prayers sheds a lot of light. So I would encourage you to be in the word, talk with other believers, be praying real deep and real big all the time. But then also don't forget the pattern of scripture. And this is something that most people leave out. I, I, in fact, I don't think I've ever watched a video like this where somebody brings this up. In scripture, there's certain patterns by which God works. For example, when God was working through Moses, leading God's people through the wilderness, Moses got old. He was like, yeah, you're not going into the promised land. Raised up Joshua. And Moses speaks to Joshua God's words, be strong and courageous. Then God speaks that to Joshua, be strong and courageous. And then the book of Deuteronomy ends and we get into Joshua and we see it repeated again. And then eventually we see Joshua passing it on to God's people, be strong and courageous. And there's this pass on of being strong and courageous because God brought us out of slavery in Egypt into the Exodus. So there's like that pattern in scripture where you see over and over again, this concept being repeated to God's people of like, remember what he's done and that will empower your faith today to be strong, to be courageous, to ignore the idols of the world and to follow God fully. We see that pattern in scripture. But another pattern that we see in scripture is this call to move, this call to go, this call to arise. It's the Hebrew kum and it's used in many different places throughout the Old Testament. But most notably, when God is making his promises to Abraham and tells him to walk the land of promise that he's promised to him. Then again, in Genesis 17, God says, I'm going to go, I'm going to arise, I'm going to establish my covenant. God says the same thing in Exodus 6, verse four, reminding Moses of the covenant he made all the way back to the forefathers of the faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now to him as well. Then again, in, in chapter 12, verse 30, where Pharaoh arose, the Hebrew kum, and found that every firstborn son in Egypt, except those covered by the blood of the Passover lamb, had been taken. So then he summons Moses and Aaron and says, arise, get up, go. The same Hebrew kum. In Exodus 24, verse 13, Moses arises, the Hebrew kum, with Joshua. In chapter 40, verses 2 and 17, the same word is used to erect or arise a tabernacle. In Joshua 1, verse 2, the Lord calls to Joshua and tells him to arise and to lead the people of God into the promised land. In Judges 5, 7, Deborah arises, that same Hebrew word. Naomi in Ruth 1 verse 6 is recorded arising. Then Ruth in chapter 2, 15 and 3, 14. In 1 Samuel 1, Hannah is recorded arising. And then in the chapter over, she sings that the Lord has arisen the poor from the dust. In 1 Samuel 3, 6, Samuel is recorded arising. In Jonah, God calls Jonah to arise. All throughout the Bible, the Lord has called these great great forefathers of the faith, these great leaders to arise and go. I think about the New Testament, Jesus calling Lazarus from the tomb, calling the young girl up from the bed. Luke 8, 54, child arise. Now, granted, this is Greek. This is not the same Hebrew word exactly because it is in Greek. But we're moving now from a word study to really a concept here. Over and over again, through the storyline of the Bible, we see God call his people to action, to arise, to go. And you might be saying, well, God, I wanna know where do I go? Well, I can tell you right here, right now, without a shadow of doubt that you are definitely called to go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching to them to observe all that I've commanded you and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. That is what God said to a crowd of witnesses unlisted as he ascended into heaven. It wasn't just old people. It wasn't the, just the educated. It wasn't just the men or just the women or just the kids or just the holy Jews or the dirty Gentiles. He calls us all to go therefore without discrimination, without addendums to go there. So yes, you may not know exactly where you are going, but Psalm 23 doesn't tell us that you'll know exactly where you're going. It just knows where you're at, right? 
Psalm 23 reads, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Once again, another powerful psalm, Psalm 46, doesn't tell us where exactly we're going, where exactly God's leading us, but it tells us what he's going to do in the midst of it. Yes, though the nations rage or the kingdoms totter, the Lord of hosts is with us, verse 7. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So yes, you may not know what exactly he's doing or calling you to do right here, but you're called to take the next step forward. And friends, that's often how the Lord teaches and speaks to me is by just taking the next step forward. But let me think, five, six years ago, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do after college. I had just gotten this Bible degree and married a man and he had went off to a church and started a ministry and I just wanted to talk about the Bible more and we didn't have money to go to seminary and all I could do was I just wanted to study the Bible more and talk about it and everything I did, I kept kind of circling back to that. So I was like, well, if nobody wants to start a Bible study here in my hometown where I live, I'll just go online and I'll start talking about the Lord. And little did I, I never expected for it to be what it is today ever but I just took that next step forward and I kind of tumbled here and I tumbled kind of tumbled there many people don't know I had an Etsy page where I was doing monograms for a while and I kept just wanting to talk about Jesus <laughs> then I did some like mom vlogs and I just wanted to keep talking about Jesus I didn't even know Bible study YouTube existed but it was taking that next step forward starting my Etsy shop titled how to faith a life and then I just wanted to have some like Bible studies to supplement this gospel that I was presenting as I did people's monograms and then I saw all these moms doing these like mom vlogs on YouTube and so I was like hey I want to join and that looks fun and then that got me on YouTube with this How to Faith a Life Gmail account. And here I am years later, I can look back and see, oh, that's what God was doing. And all I had to do was take the next step forward. So guys, I can't tell you where exactly your God's leading you to go, college or even using your spiritual gifts or church or even with your kids, or I can't tell you exactly, but I do know the end all be all. I know you're called to go there for and make disciples wherever you're at in whatever ways you're gifted and called to be and do. But I also know that we're looking heaven bound to that eternal hope. Then I saw a new heavens and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain nor anything from the former things that passed away. So friends, if death is gonna be no more, if pain and suffering and tears is gonna be no more, then what you do here now does not need to be defined by hurt and pain and fears. Then what you do here today does not need to be defined by anything but our eternal hope which we know is, is unchangeable, is set in stone by Christ's blood itself. It can't be taken away. And so you live out Matthew 28, 19 through 20, that go therefore and make disciples without the fear and the, and the darkness and, and the doubts and the trauma and all of that, but you live unto that eternal hope knowing that there will be no death, there, that there will be no sorrow. And you run that race that Christ has set before you. In whatever place God's put you, you just take that next step forward. Don't be afraid to arise, to go take that next step forward. And if God shuts the door in your face, look to the left and the right and say, okay, God, what next? God is moving and directing you in your faithfulness today. It's not in your faithfulness because you know the next five years, it's in your faithfulness today. So friends, let's go. Let's go preach the gospel to the nations, being faithful in the right here and the right now without eternal hope. But remember, let's be in the word. It is our light and it is our guide. Now, if you want tips about how to study the Bible, that's literally my passion. I created so many content and resources to help you better understand the Bible and enjoy the Bible. So check this playlist out right here. I've catered it just to you to help you and strengthen you so that when you get back into the word tomorrow morning, you're a little bit stronger and a little bit more on fire for Christ. I'll see you guys in this playlist right here. Bye guys.